From around the globe, it's theCUBE with digital coverage of AWS Public Sector Partner Awards. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hi, and welcome to a special production of theCUBE. We're talking to the Amazon Web Services Public Sector, their Partner Awards Program. I'm your host, Stu Miniman, and we're digging in on education. Uh, it's one of the sectors, of course, public sector uh, looks at nonprofits, it looks at the, the government sectors and education. And of course, when we talk about remote learning is such a huge important topic, uh, especially right now in, in 2020 with the global pandemic. So happy to welcome to the program. We have two guests. Uh, first of all, we're representing the award-winning company, Mohammed Hawk. He is the co-founder and senior vice president of architecture and engineering with eLumen. And joining is one of his customers, Damian Doyle, uh, who is the Associate Vice President of Enterprise Infrastructure Solutions at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, or UMBC as it's known. Uh, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, thanks for having us. All right, first of all, Mohammed, uh, congratulations. Uh, as I said in my intro, you know, such an important topic. Uh, you know, I have two children uh, that are, you know, dealing with remote learning. Uh, I have lots of friends that work in higher education and knowing the technology space. Uh, so your company is the 2020 AWS Public Sector Award winner for best remote learning. Uh, I'm sure there is a space that has a lot of competition. Uh, and of course, leveraging public cloud uh, is, is a great way to be able to ramp this sort of thing up uh, rather fast. Uh, give us a little bit, uh, you know, you are uh, the, the co-founder, so I'd love to hear a little bit of the, the origin story, your background, and uh, tell us about what differentiates the Lumen. Sure. Um, Illumin, we provide uh, managed products and services around um, end user compute with a focus on education um, for providing access to applications and other technology resources, uh, course content, uh, course applications um, in the public cloud so that uh, users are able to use you know, whatever device they have uh, wherever they are. Um, so, and, and have access to those applications that are required for completing the coursework. Um, they can be in, you know, uh, you know, in, at home, in their dorms, at a corner coffee shop, on the side of a mountain in, in the Middle East, wherever they may be, um, but leveling that playing field, playing field so that they can access, um, have access to any of the um, demanding applications um, on any device um, is what we're, you know, what our goal is, is to make sure that we're not having technology be a barrier to their learning. Fantastic. Uh, Damien, if, if we could turn to you then, uh, at, at UMBC, uh, maybe if you could give our audience a, a thumbnail of, uh, you know, the, the, the university, and uh, I, I have uh, some idea of the, of the challenge uh, that was put in, fr in front of you when, when you talk about e-learning, but uh, maybe you could give us a little bit of the pre-COVID and, uh, you know, what, uh, what you were faced and what you were looking at uh, when, when it came to uh, dealing with uh, the, the, the current situation. Sure, be happy to. So we're, UMBC is a uh, mid-sized public institution. We're sort of suburban, about 14,000 students. And um, we have undergrad, graduate, and doctoral programs. And we have a heavy focus on a lot of the STEM disciplines. And so pre-COVID, uh, very based in um, collaborative environments, active learning, but but hands-on. So a lot of our programs really do have a lot of that. And we leverage technology very heavily, even if it's in, whether it's in engineering, biology, any of those kinds of programs. Uh, as you said, the, the challenge became, how do you very quickly pivot into an entirely online model when you sort of scattershot all of your students and you don't really have a, a great sense of what they're going to have access to and um, and the abilities and connectivity they're going to have. So this, this kind of thing was really critical for us as we made that transition. Excellent. Mo Mohammed, uh, w w were you working with UMBC uh, before uh, the, the, the current move to uh, go, go remote? Uh, give us a little bit about the relationship and, and, and how that started. I believe actually that the, the, the pandemic was the impetus to kind of drive this forward. Um, uh, Damien and his team reached out to Illumin um, looking for a solution that would allow them to kind of uh, have students access the, the applications that they would normally would have access to in their physical computer labs, but with uh, the, the change and not having to access to those labs anymore, uh, needed a remote learning solution, a remote access solution for being able to access those you know, 
um, high compute, high graphics, um, process uh, memory intensive applications, you know, through, through the cloud, um, taking into account the fact that, you know, uh, students won't have, you know, the, the highest end um, computer laptop, you know, they, they'll probably be working on a Chromebook or a lower end machine, but need that compute power. Um, and then we had to kind of uh, provide a solution um, pretty quickly because it was, uh, you know, schools were shutting down, essentially physically sh shutting down and needing to continue on with their, their coursework. coursework. Yeah, D D Damien, I, I, I'd like to understand from your side, can you share with us a little bit the timeframes, you know, how fast did you go from, oh my gosh, we need this, we need proposals, we need to roll this out, and we need to have students uh, and, and teachers uh, back up and running? Well, you know, I think the the one thing from our side, we had already known of Illumin and we had been looking at that pre-COVID. We knew we needed a product that that provided us this kind of agility and really gave the students some some better access to uh, the computing tools that they needed. So once we identified that, the thing that was amazing to me is is we moved from our existing system over to production Illumin in, I think it was about two and a half weeks sort of start to finish. And um, you know, to to get all the images, to get all the technology running, tested, and everything up and running in two and a half weeks for a full solution for a campus is was pretty amazing. And and that was one of the the real benefits we saw as going to the cloud. We also looked at this outside of COVID as something that really provided a major benefit to the students, so that they could work from anywhere at any time, rather than be sort of tethered to that physical lab. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you raised that. So if you could, Damien, a little bit, you know, help us understand, you know, how much are you using uh, cloud before? And it, it sounds like you believe that, uh, you know, in the, you know, I guess if we say post COVID world, uh, you will probably have some hybrid model. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I think before we did have a, a different solution that was still cloud-based, it was part of our business continuity. So we, we still had some semblance of a virtual computing solution in the cloud, but it wasn't that extensive. And a lot of our individual programs, uh, chemical engineering, geography, and others were using physical labs that the students would sort of schedule times and be able to work in as part of their coursework. Uh, coming out of this, we fully expect if, if we're going an extended period of time where students are able to access these materials and, and these demanding software packages at any time from any kind of device, Coming out of COVID, uh, they're not going to want to go back to that model where they're asking, you know, they have to get permission and go in and limited hours into a physical lab and sit there. This is going to be the expectation going forward: is that they have this kind of access and this kind of flexibility uh, from now on. Yeah, this is. I mean, they've they've gotten a taste essentially, and so you know, they 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 see how easy it is to you know complete their coursework without actually having to trek across campus into. Uh, you know, a, a lab and, you know, kind of fight with the population to, you know, find a seat. Um, this basically will become an expectation uh, of an offering. Yeah, M Mohammed, what, what I'd love if you could drill in a little bit for us there. Uh, architecturally speaking, uh, of course, the cloud is built to be able to scale and, and move fast. So if you need capacity and need to scale up fast, that's great. If in the future you still want to leverage this solution, but you can scale down, uh, that that should be possible. So may, maybe give us a little bit of, uh, you know, how AWS architecturally supports what you're doing, and you know, just from a pricing solution standpoint, uh, how you'll be able to support the customer in, in today's environment, and however that path goes down the road, uh, you'll be able to support that too. Right. I mean, so you know, with the AWS cloud, we're able to, as you said, scale up or down as demand is needed. But we we've taken that even a little bit further, where we're scaling based off of um, student scheduling. So if we've got a course that we know that is running from um, you know 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. You know, prior to that course starting, we'll scale the the environment up so that it's available for those students. Um, if it's in you know uh, more of a in course lab session, um, and then spin things back down. Uh, after the course is done, so that we don't have that that ma those many many machines um, sitting there running and, and burning the hours and running up the bill. Um, you know, physical environment. You know, once you've installed it, it's there. It's always running. Um, you you cannot do that. But with the power of the cloud, we're able to go up and down. Uh, we're able to take things, uh, you know, scale things down off hours if we 
uh, look at the patterns for student usage, you know, off hours, you know, overnight, you know, take things down because you don't need those machines sitting there running, running all the time. And this is one of the biggest differentiators. So many times in higher ed, we struggle to have to explain to companies and, and vendors and providers what our needs are and how we're very, we're very different from corporations and other, other verticals. Uh, with the Lumen solution and the capabilities in AWS, we're really having this tailored to our student schedules, to the class schedules, and that kind of flexibility makes the product economically viable for us, but it also means that uh, we don't get nearly the kind of pushback from the academic side because it is really tailored to meet their needs versus just something we're kind of shoehorning in. So that makes a, a huge difference in terms of adoption and just the way it's perceived from a mar you know, marketing and acceptance standpoint. Yeah, D Damien, I'm curious, uh, you know, once you did that initial rollout, you know, how much of an on-ramp is there for both the education, the educator side, as well as the student side? Uh, and you talked about having some flexibility as to how and when students use things, that sounds great, uh, but do you have to change you know, office hours or the hours that uh, the, the, the staff um, are, are leveraging that? I'm just trying to understand the, uh, you know, the ripple effect of what you're doing. No, it's, it's a fair point. We, we have done fairly extensive training. The students picked it up very quickly. What we, with students, if there's a tool that they can use to do their work more effectively, they're going to use it, whether it's something we provide or something they find through other means. But what we've done is, is reached out to all of our faculty that were training, that were teaching in our physical labs and tried to work with them to understand what this solution is, how they can sort of rethink some of their classes. And a, a couple of our departments have actually taken a, an approach of rather than sit everybody in a virtual lab the same way they would sit people in a physical lab, they're moving some of this to more asynchronous so that the students can sort of work at their own pace and sort of rethink how they structure some of those classes because of the flexibility being provided. But it does take a lot of training uh, from the instructional side and some rethinking of this. But it, the end solution is something that reaches the students where they are and the way they want to learn, which is a really powerful thing we're always trying to do. Excellent. Uh, Mohammed, I'm wondering just broadly uh, learnings that you have uh, from what, what's been happening. Obviously, I'm sure you've been quite busy in responding to things. You know, how, how, what's been the impact on your business? Uh, how has AWS been as a partner to be able to support the needs uh, of what you're doing? Uh, well, as as you can imagine, you know things have just really blown up um, uh, in, in terms of demand and being able to, again, through the power of the cloud, just being able to scale up and rapid deployment. I, you know, as we spoke about earlier, this deployment was, uh, you know, two two and a half weeks um, from start to finish. Uh, being able to do that, um, being able to do that with AWS tools, have been um, critical in 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 moving things forward. Excellent, uh, Damien. Uh, it's just, uh, back to you on this. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, if you had had, you know more time to be able to plan this out, there, there might be some things that you would do differently, but what have your learnings been with this? And if you've been talking to your peers, any advice that you would give uh, as, you know, as, as you've moved through this, this rapid acceleration uh, of the move to remote? Certainly, I, I think we would have certainly done some things differently, but we had been talking about this move for three or four months ahead of COVID. So for us, it wasn't, it wasn't quite as rushed as the actual deployment wound up being. Uh, I think the big thing is having a, having a vendor and having a partner where you can understand all the options. So the good and bad of the cloud is there's a hundred different ways to do almost anything you want to accomplish and taking the time to understand what the different features and the ramifications of how you how you deploy and how you think, think through that. For us, we deployed one way because we could do it very quickly. And then we took the rest of the semester and part of the summer to do some more thorough evaluations to really ask our constituents, do you like this method or do you like some of the other, you know, some of the other possibilities and see which user experience they liked more. And then we're able to work with eLumen and, and they've been able to be very nimble in adjusting uh, the services to meet what we've gotten our feedback on. So I think if I had to do it again, I would have done that testing 
ahead of time, but that's a very minor thing. It, these are really sort of small tweaks to just make life a little easier, not fundamental differences in the what we're providing. Yeah, Dam well, Damien, I, what, 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 one last question if I could. Uh, um, sorry, sorry, Mohammed. just I'm, I'm curious from the financial standpoint, you know, how much uh, you felt that you understood what costs would be and, and some of the levers uh, as to what are you using and the impact there. We've seen, you know, great maturation uh, over the last handful of years as to, you know, you know, transparency and understanding how cloud actually is built. But, you know, just curious if you have any final comments on, on, on the financial piece of things, uh, seeing that it probably wasn't something that was in your budget for the last quarter. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't, uh, that's very true, but we also knew that it was essential. So that it, what we realized was we didn't know how often a lot of our physical labs and these classes were being used. So we knew there was going to be some unknowns. We'd move to this, we'd have to see what adoption was, but being able to get the reporting out and working with Muhammad and others to really start customizing in the cloud, that's the, the beauty of it is we recognized, we saw some really fascinating patterns where during the week, People would use this sort of as you'd expect, but on the weekends, it was in the evenings. Nobody, nobody's logging on Saturday or Sunday morning, but boy, at 8 p.m., there's a good bit of usage. So we could tailor and, and do some of that off hours work and really slow things down. Having that visibility has made the economic piece much more viable and really being able to tweak the computing power with uh, to the different needs of the different classes. So it's, it's actually been fairly easy to understand, but it was a ramp up where we had to sort of guess it first and then understand our own processes. But that's more sort of the, if you don't have good data coming in, it's hard to get it, get it out. Excellent. Right. Mohammed, I, I want to let you uh, kind of give your lessons learned. Uh, obviously it's a, a technology space you've been in uh, and it's just been an acceleration of some of the things you're working on. So uh, lessons learned, advice you would give to uh, you know, other companies uh, other universities and education mill facilities out there. Right, and uh, you know, this, this is again, speaking to the power of the cloud, right? Uh, some of the, one of the biggest lessons learned here is you don't necessarily need to get it right the first time. As Damien saying, was saying, you know, we went back, um, kind of analyzed what we were seeing in, uh, after the initial deployment, took a look at the, the actual usage and kind of adjusted based, uh, based off of that according to that. Uh, taking in feedback from faculty members on how they were using the system and uh, tweaking uh, the presentation or tweaking applications on the back end uh, for uh, accommodating those needs. Um, that's the power of the cloud, being able to adjust on the fly. You're not, you're, you don't have to be committed to every single bit there uh, and being able to change it uh, on the fly is, is just something that is kind of natural in the cloud these days. Excellent. Well, thank you both so much for joining us. Uh, Damien, uh, thank you for joining and uh, you know, moving forward, sharing your story. Uh, wish you the best of luck going forward. And Mohammed, big congratulations on winning, uh, you know, super important category, especially here in 2020. Uh, congratulations to you and the team. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, stay tuned for more coverage here from the AWS Public Sector. It's their partner awards program. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.